So today we're going to build on yesterday where we were looking at the equal sign and what happens when uh, number sentences aren't equal, when there's a greater than and a less than. Um, and, but the big focus today is on finding whether there are different possible um, answers to a number sentence or whether there's only one possible answer. And we're going to do loads and loads of reasoning around that. Um, so that hopefully will be great uh, and we're going to get right into it. So we're starting today as is our new way. Um, beginning looking back at yesterday's extend task. So here it is. Um, now yesterday we were looking at this idea of the equals means the same, the same on both sides and establishing that. So whatever's on this side, if it's equal here, whatever's on that side must in total be the same. Um, and we had these questions, but the question that we were really looking at here was which number sentences have only one answer and which number sentences have different answers? Um, well, let's have a little look at this one. Um, so I'm just for this one going to be using positive whole numbers as well. So when I've got this number, subtract 15 equals 6. So I've got to make this side equal to 6. So what subtract 15 is, is the same as 6? Well, actually, it is 21. And the only number that can go in this space is 21. I've, I've only got one gap, one missing a piece and here it is there's nothing else this could be because these numbers don't change at all and um, so now this side equals to six and this side is is the six so they are the same um now if we have a look at this example though there are here more than one possible answer and um, because it, in fact here there's an infinite number of answers because let's say i do six times two and so this is 12 so here this this must be a two um, but equally, if I was to multiply by more, let's say I was to do 6 times 3, that's 18, so that would be 10 plus 8. And I, I could just keep having more and more and more and more and more and more there. Um, so, for example, I, it could be I, I do 6 times 10, so that side is 60. Um, so what would I have to add to this 10? I would have to add 50. No end of numbers it could be. Um, well, let's have a look at the examples here. Um, so let's say 15 subtract a number equals 6 plus something. Now there is a limited number of numbers it could be here, but let's say it could be 15 subtract 1, that makes this side 14. Um, so 6 plus 8 is 14, um, but equally uh, I could have different possible answers. So let's say it could be I do 15 subtract 5, so this side would be 10, so here it would have to be 6 plus Four. Um, let me write that out in full. So 15 subtract 5, this part is 10, and that is the same as 6 plus 4. So that's 10 as well. Um, so lots of different possible answers here. Um, now this one, it looks very, very similar, but the numbers chosen, it makes it slightly different. Because actually I've got to do 6 multiplied by something equals 10 subtract something. Now actually in this case, the only one it could be is 6 times 1. So then this side is 6. And then here I've got to do 10 subtract 4 to make this side 6. If I multiply 6 by more than 1, if I multiply it by 2, then I'll have more than 10. So here, using positive whole numbers, this is the only possible answer. So there, we've got the blue one and the purple one. I've got one way and the green one and the red one. I've got different numbers of ways. Well, today we're building on where we got to yesterday. Um, using those equal signs and, and those unequal signs, so the greater than and less than signs. Um, and it's called different answers today because we're going to look at different number sentences and we're going to think, when is it that there's only one answer and when is it that there can be different answers? Uh, so that's the challenge. I'm not going to ask you to find how many answers for once, um, but is it possible in number sentences to find different answers? That's where we're going. So this was uh, just a little recap from yesterday. And we had a look at images like this one and, and said this is 3 plus 2 and this is 4 plus 1 and these are the same, they're equal because they're both 5, 5 there and 5 there. And we had a look at the, uh, this example, but 3 plus 3 is not the same as 8, in fact 8 is more, so we have this sign to show which side is more. But if I do 8 subtract 2, then they are the same, both sides are 6 there. So my number sentence would be 3 plus 3 is the same as, is equal to 8 subtract 2. So that both sides were 6. Um, now, of course, we could use multiplication for the same thing. So have a look at this picture here and the groups here. So we've got sets of 3 there. Um, so a way I could describe this one is 4 times 3. So I've got four lots of, um, 4 lots of 3. 
and that is the same as seven plus five because uh, there's seven gray five that are blue and there you can see it's the same both both 12. Um, but if I change that slightly four times three is more than seven plus three because four times three is 12 and seven plus plus three is just 10. So I use the sign appropriately. It, it's the uh, wider way is going towards the four times three. So have a look at these examples here. For each example, for, for all of these examples here and on this side, are they correct or not correct? Pause the video, have a think about them. All right, let's have a look. Um, well, four times five equals 20, but this side is actually 24. Sometimes we just look at this part and think, oh, this is correct and forget about this four here. Now this is incorrect because this side is 20 and this side is 24. So four times six is 24. 20 plus four is 24. Yes, they're the same. And four times 10 is 40 and 20 plus 20 is 40. So yeah, there's two answers that are correct. Um, for, for this number sentence here, we've seen different ways it can be done. And for the question, 15 subtract a number is more than 10. Well, 15 subtract three, yeah, that's 12, that is more than 10. 15 subtract 12, no, that's only three. Now, a mistake that can be made is just to compare the 12 and the 10 and think the 12 is more. But no, we're looking at everything here, this whole side of, of the sign, and that is only three, which is much less than 10. And 15 subtract five is 10, and this is 10. So no, this isn't more. In fact, they're the same. So in this case, it's just this one that's correct here. Okay, well, have a look at these questions here. Which of these questions have different answers? Which of the questions only have one answer? What do you notice about them? The ones that have just one answer and those that have more than one answer. Uh, pause the video and have a go. We're only using positive whole numbers as well. And let's have a little look. Um, well, six plus something um, and eight is more. It can actually only be one here um, using whole numbers. Um, if we're going greater than zero, because um, one, yeah, six plus one is seven. But then if I added any more, if I added two, that would actually be equal to eight. And if I added three, this side would be more. So in this case, only one possible answer. This example here, we've got this one answer, six times five equals 30. It's the only thing it can be to equal 30. And, uh, and notice here, there's only one box and they have to be the same. So there's only one possible answer. Now, the top right hand one, 10 plus one is the same as 15 subtract four um, because they're both at 11. But also 10 plus two is 12, 15 subtract three is 12. So that proves that that one again has different possible answers. Now you might see what's the same or what's different about these two number sentences. Let's see if we can find an answer. Six times six equals 30 plus six. Uh, so that's one way. But I could also do six times seven and just have another lot of six that I add to the 30. So six times seven is 42. 30 plus 12 is 42 as well. So they're the same. And this question can be answered in different ways. And that brings us to our main task today. So which questions have different answers? And which questions only have one answer? Have a look at these six and think, which ones can I answer in different ways? And why is that? Um, so enjoy this challenge. It's your main one today. Pause the video and get stuck in. And when you're ready, let's have a look. So which questions had different possible answers? Um, well here, these two questions have just got one answer. Now something to notice about them. There's just one box for a missing number. And also there's an equal sign. So it has to be, ex the, the answer has to be exactly a number. In this case, 20 and in this case, 18. And so then there's only one possible answer. Whereas these questions here, they actually have two or three different answers. Um, so you can see the, the one on the left here had three different answers. And it says that one side limits the number of possible answers. 20 subtract a number um, means that the number can't be more than 20, it has to be less than 20. So I have to find the multiples of five that will end up being less than 20, three answers. And, and here again, the, uh, there's a limit. So it has to be 
overall that the side this side is more than than eight um, so there's only a certain number of amounts that I can subtract to, to make that the case I can take away one I can take away two if I take away any more than that it will either be eight or it will be less than eight um, but there are actually these examples here where there is an infinite number of answers the number of answers just keeps going and going because here I could always multiply by more and then just add more so for example 10 times 5 is 50 26 plus 24 is 50 as well but I could I just get more lots of 5 and add more and here I can just make this number bigger and bigger and bigger because this side is more so I can just keep making that number as large as I wanted so actually here there is a never-ending number of possible answers so if you want to go further click on that blue link underneath the video I've got two option extend tasks for you so have a look at this first one um, to answer this one only whole numbers greater than zero are used and order the questions from the fewest to the most possible answers so how many ways can each question be answered um, for question A, question B and question C? Or you could even have a go at extend task B, which is about designing your own question. In this form, it's got to be able to be answered in exactly three ways. So you're going to have to think about the numbers that you choose to ensure that there are, own, there are exactly three answers, no more, no less. So I've given you a little suggestion of the kind of structures you can use with that. So I think that's a real challenge. Um, be sure to be back tomorrow. It's going to be epic. I'm going to see you then.